Yes, my dear friend, welcome back to the channel. This is Salon Blood. Very good, good morning to you wherever you are on the globe, especially on the continent of Africa, in Europe, in America, in Canada, Australia, or right here in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, to be precise. Wherever you are, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Friday edition. Listen, we are waiting on our coach. I was expecting the coach to speak before I come your way. But whilst I was waiting, I realized that there's a delay in a press conference. So I decided to come right now with these exclusives. Later tonight, don't worry, or later this afternoon, I will be back. That is a promise from me. This time around, no failure. I'll be back with every word from the coach. A lot to talk about from the coach. We are going to be hearing so much from the transfers, from the players that are back for international break, from you know the management, I mean the ownership, a whole lot, a whole lot we are expecting to hear from our coach. But this very hour, ladies and gentlemen, quickly, let's get started. You see, Matt Law reported on this ownership saga. Todd Bole and Ed Bale saga. <laughs> or Todd Bole and Clele Capital. Yes, Matt Law, he is a top journalist in the UK. I mean, the, one of the closest to Chelsea Football Club, always at Cobham. He always have an ear right there. And he has something interesting to say from his personal perspective and observation of both sides, Todd Bole and Clelic Group. You see, and he identifies something. He says, it doesn't matter that Clelic are majority stake stakeholders in Chelsea right now. It doesn't matter that Clelic Group, they are the majority shareholders right now. He says that a bid is going to be a big moment. A bid from Todd Bowley will be a big moment for Chelsea Football Club. He said, where is the day Bowley, Wiz and Walter? When he, he said the word is, it means that what he heard, the information that he's receiving is that Todd Bowley, Wiz and Walter, those are the partners of Todd Bowley, the minority shareholders right would only operate as a package they are not going to come in as an individual they are coming in as a package so it is impossible for clearly to try and buy out just Todd Bowley. it is impossible for clearly to try to buy out only Todd Bowley because the other minority shareholders are in partnership with Todd Bowley. You get it? So, as it stands, for those of us that are having some, you know, feelings, strange feelings that we might, you know, or we prefer Todd Bowley taking over fully. Yes, I prefer Todd Bowley taking over Chelsea fully than the clearly capital. At Ballet and the system, I really don't like it. I, anything football the future future i don't want to become another arsenal i don't want my chelsea to become another arsenal no or tottenham no i want the tradition to maintain for the past 20 25 years we've been a winning team a winning football club trophies yes so i really want todd Bole to stay now from what Madlaw is saying, it simply means that they cannot just bully Todd Bowley alone. Clearly, Capital cannot bully Todd Bowley alone. There are partners that are working alongside Todd Bowley. And so before you try to touch Todd Bowley, remember there are other two partners, according to the report we are receiving. Ladies and gentlemen, we are moving further to the main issues for the day. We are back from the international break. The players are back at Cobham. In fact, by now, I believe all, almost all of the players should be at Cobham this afternoon. Every one of them. Every one of them. But you see, one player that did not travel or went for international break and has been at Cobham was our latest or our last signing. Our last signing. And that is Jordan Sancho. Yes, that is Jordan Sancho. And it will interest you to note that Sancho has been training with our coaches at Cobham. He's been training with our coaches throughout the period in Cobham. Yes. 
And so Enzo Maresca, our head coach, has this to say about him, about the few times or the few days that they spent together at Cobham. This is not a press conference yet. This is the coach speaking, you know, to some journalists. Fabrizio Romano, in particular, got it very clear. He says, Enzo Maresca on Jordan Sancho during the international break. He has been exactly what I expected. Jordan Sancho has been exactly what our coach expected, according to the report he receiving. He, and I quote, he is a very good player, a one versus one player with quality in the last third. One on one player with a quality in the last third. I'm sure he's going to help us. Ladies and gentlemen, Moidrick is finished. <laughs> that is what it simply means. If Jordan Sancho should perform tomorrow on that left flank and deliver, just as our coach is seeing it, that he is a very good player, one versus one player with quality in the last third. The last third has been a problem with Moidrick. It's not about running with the ball, it's not about the physicality, but the last third, the final third, the final delivery. And our coach is saying, Sancho has a quality in the last step. He says, I am sure he's going to help us. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? I am on the view that Moedrick is almost finished in Chelsea. Unless, unless, unless Moedrick will begin to up his game, just as we saw in the international break. Oh yes, we all saw, we all saw him during the international break. And he did extremely well. I just can't believe that the same Moedric we saw in the international break doing extremely well will come to the football club that is paying his wages weekly and will be seeing a different sort of Moedric. I don't get it. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> all right, let me hear from you in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Okay. One other player that also was called for the international break was Wesley Fofana. Fofana was called to the international break, but he withdrew. He came back early and he issued a statement. He made his stance very clear that he wants to be with the Chelsea medical team so that they can take good care of him. He is on a program. But a few days ago he spoke. I Yesterday I could have come up with this. Because he was interviewed and he spoke at length, which many people misinterpreted it. They misinterpreted his comment. Yes. I am not too sure whether they purposely tried to misconstrue it to make the headlines or not. But you see, the player was categorical in most of the statements he made. One thing that he said, that caught my attention, he said, Olympic, Ma he said, Wesley Bufana, Olympic Marseille, we will see one day. We will see one day. And he continued. I still have a contract until 2029 with Chelsea. We will see. Marseille is my city, my club. I am an Olympic Marseille supporter. <laughs> we will see if I end up being at Marseille in a few years or if I stay at Chelsea for the rest of my career. What is wrong with this statement? What is actually wrong with this statement? The player says that he has a contract with Chelsea until 2029. How old is he right now? Wesley Fofana is, I think, 23, 24. By the time he ends up with his contract end, he will be around 29, 30. So if Chelsea did not renew his contract, or if he chooses to leave back to his home country, France, and his club, childhood club, Supporter is Marseille, and he says that we will see. Marseille is my city, my club. I am an Olympic Marseille supporter. Why are people trying to misconstrue what he said? The player never threw in the tower, he never requested to leave Chelsea. He was interviewed, and like any other human being, he has a right to answer a question, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe you might heard it somewhere. That Wesley Fofana want to leave Chelsea. No, 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 no. That is not the case. That is not the case. 
He only says that if whether either he's going to end his career with Chelsea or after 2029, he might be leaving. He's not too sure yet. And of course, we are in 2024. Five years more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, quickly before I continue, my brothers in Ghana, look at the pitch of our football park, our stadium. Just look at our stadium, the pitch. Breaking news. And I want to make it very loud and clear for the whole world to hear it. Ghana as a football nation, this is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. The Confederation of African Football CAF has withdrawn its approval for the Babayara Stadium in Kumasi. Ghana, due to technical infractions, including an uns unsuitable playing field, unsuitable playing field, CAF has further made recommendations that needs fixing before the next inspection date. If pitch doesn't pass approval, Ghana's game against Sudan on October 11th, less than a month from now, we are in September, right? Less than a month from now, if the pitch doesn't pass approval, Ghana's game against Sudan on October 11th will be moved to a neutral venue. Are we now going to be playing our qualifying series in Togo, Benin Republic, or Nigeria? Ghana, my own nation, my, my country, Ghana. Hmm. A neutral venue. Come on. The National Sports Authority, the National Sports Authority will require $100,000 to fix the current pitch in the interim before a more modern one may be installed permanently. But how much is $100,000? If we require $100,000 to fix the pitch, now, every now and then, this pitch and this stadium has been renovated several times in the past year alone. What is wrong with us as a nation, Ghana? What is wrong with us? Why are we embarrassing this nation? The astro test we are building around the country, how much does it cost? So we are leaving the national stadium where we host international games. Where we host international games and we are now building tests, astro tests, not stadiums like parks all around. And we are claiming we are building, we are, we are doing, we're building for sports facilities. For who? Even those ones, those so-called astro tests, I understand from our indication, what we are hearing is that they are substandard, substandard astro tests just for political gain. What kind of embarrassment is this? We require $100,000 to fix this pitch. Do you know that if our national team is going to fly out of the country to partake in any of our games outside Ghana, it will cost us not less than $500,000. Oh, yes. It will cost Ghana not less than $500,000. Five times the amount that is required to fix this pitch. So now, I understand Men, guys want to collect, or those so called, the old men, they want to collect per diem. Yes, if they travel outside Ghana, they collect big per diem. They want to collect more traveling allowances. They want to sleep in seven star hotels with their big stomachs. How much is the National Sports Authority, the, the, chief, exec, the chief director, how much is he earning? If you go to check this man's salary right now, Every man, this man should be earning about close to forty, fifty thousand dollars. Oh yes, all the these so-called chief executives in Ghana, they earn huge amount of money with allowances, huge amount of money as their monthly salary plus allowances, wardrobe allowance, medical allowance, uh, uh, pet allowance. Uh, what what? Why are we doing this to ourselves? I'll revisit this issue again. Football is back this weekend and I need to focus on the football that is about to 
you know ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry but i have to all right it is well it is well dear friends i'll have to be back my heart cannot take it i'll have to be back with more exclusives I'll see you guys in the next one when you see me. Shalom and peace.